This is an art attack. This is an art attack. This is art attack. <laughs> to see you again. Hey, have you seen the Harry Potter movies? Brilliant, aren't they? Full of spells, magic, wizardry. Well, here's my own spell book, and it's full of my own type of weird and wonderful things. But as I'm no wizard, <laughs> I use it as an art binder to keep me art working. Good, isn't it? It's a sort of spell binder. <laughs> Come and have a look at this. Now, to make your own spellbinder, first you need two of these thin folders. Now, they're really cheap, and you can get them from most stationery shops. Or perhaps someone's got some lying around the house or something like that. Now, you need to glue them together back to back so that the flappy parts on each folder are at the top. Next, you need to cut out two bits of cardboard box card that are bigger than your folders. Now, you notice I've done one straight edge on each piece, and the other edges are curved to give a medieval effect to your book. Now, place the glued folders between the two pieces of card and line them up so that the straight edges run along the top of your flaps of your folders and then glue them into place so that you have something that looks like this. Look at that. And when the glue is dried, you get this sort of spell book shape with these two pockets. There it is. Next, you need to bind the card covers together down the sides where the flaps of your folders are to make a spine. Now, to do this, you need a strip of thin card or thick paper that's nearly the same length as the side of the card and about 10 centimetres wide. And the idea is to put some glue down the edges of the strips, like that, but not down the middle. Don't do it down the middle, you'll see why in a minute. Then line one edge of the glued strip up along one edge of the card, like that, and stick it down. And then fold it round and stick the other edge onto the other cover like this. Now, you might need to hold it into place a bit while the glue dries. And you could even add some tape. And when it's dried, you have your basic spell binder complete with spine. Now, you could paint it now, or why not add on some extra 3D detail? Just cut some shapes out of scraps of card and stick them on. Now, I've got some tape on these shapes. How's about some raised corner pieces like this? And you can do the front and back. I'm just going to do the front like that to show you. And how about a couple of hinges, sort of castle-like hinges, <laughs> down the side where the spine is? And how about this? This looks really slick. How's about sticking a fancy-looking initial onto some bits of card, a couple of layers there, and stick them in the middle of your cover like that. Now, in order for your artwork to be safe on the inside of your spellbinder, you need to keep it locked up. Now, to make your lock, you need another small rectangle of card and you need a keyhole shape drawn into it. Now, stick this in place on the right-hand edge and then, using a sharp pencil and a ball of sticky tack underneath, just carefully pop a hole through both pieces of card. Be careful doing this one and go through both bits so that there's a hole that goes all the way through. And you can wiggle your pencil around a bit and then take it out. And to make the catch, turn the book over and then take a small strip of thin card, about one centimetre wide, and place it just in from the left-hand edge there, around about the centre, and tape each of the ends like that. One on there and one in there, just those ends. Now, once you've done the fiddly bit, you can make the cover of your spell book look all old and gnarled. Just mix some PVA glue, half and half with water, and slop it all over your cover, like that. And you've seen me do this hundreds of times. The idea is to just lay on pieces of tissue, or loo roll, or kitchen roll over the front, and just slop more glue on the top. You don't have to be neat, it all adds to the effect.
go over all the raised card on the front and the back and on the spine and when you've covered it all in one layer of glue and tissue and you've added on some extra detail leave the whole thing to dry and when it's dry you'll have something that looks like this and I've even molded some extra rivets out of papier-mâché and glued on some bits of string now whatever you do be careful you don't seal over the hole in the lock now you'll notice that on the back I've tissued over the taped ends just the taped ends of the catch and it's a good idea to do this as it seals the ends and it makes the locking mechanism a lot stronger now it's ready to paint using poster or acrylic paint and you can paint it any color you like I've done mine in a nice medieval purple with a metallic gold trim and I've even added on a sort of velvety green backing to my initial and all you need now is a key just cut an L-shaped key out of cardboard box card about one centimeter in width then paint it I've done this a nice silver and tie on a piece of string and tie it through the hole in the lock on the front like this then it's just a case of putting your artwork inside your spellbinder like that just slot it in and keep it nice and safe in there like that and to keep it really safely locked up simply slot the key through the catch on the back look at that in it goes and that's really safe now and there it is good isn't it very wizardy <laughs> try it yourself keep your artwork safe in your very own spellbinder oh what a magical art attack hello yes it's me again the head now when you're making one for yourself just remember when you're gluing the folders back to back make sure you don't put any glue on the flappy bits and don't worry if you missed any of that, because you can check out the Art Attack website for details on the Spellbinder and all the other Art Attacks on the show. Oh.
I don't know about you, but my mum is always complaining that she's got a big bum. And my dad is forever complaining about the size of his tummy. My sister's always going on about her chin being too big. <laughs> well, here's a bit of fun. What if nature really had gone mad and some of our body parts did grow out of proportion? Try this. It's funny. Start with two enormous body bits. Now, you can pick any two bits you like, but the idea is to fit the rest of the face around them. So I'm going to try two really big bulgy eyes and how about two huge feet? Big toe in there. Now, you can pick any two body parts. The idea is to just exaggerate them and make them look really big and see what starts to happen. You start to create these really weird cartoon characters. Now, the rule is you've got to make all the rest of the body parts normal size. So there's a nose and there's a mouth across there. <laughs> this is weird. I'll put some ears in there around these big eyes. And I've got to fit everything else in. That's the rule. So there goes his arms and hands. That's assuming it is a him. And that's about his body there. And then just enough room for his legs and trousers. Look at that. Weird or what? <laughs> OK, let's do another one. Let's create another weird and wonderful character. Again, just pick two body parts and make them gigantic. So, OK, what if we had huge teeth? Like that. And, I don't know, huge ears. Let's see what happens here. See, the great thing is you don't know how these are going to come out. So let's put those ears in. And, again, the rule is you've got to make all the other body parts normal size. But they've got to fit around these ones. So mouth in there, nose in there, eyes in normal size, <laughs> like that. Now, this is going to be hard. Look at that hair. So that comes across to there and to there. I think I'll make this a girl, there, like that. And the rest of her face to fit around those teeth, there, like that. I think we'll give her some freckles in there, like that. And the rest of her hair down there. And, of course, the rest of her body, normal size. <laughs> Again, she's really weird. Look at that. <laughs> In fact, you can go on for ages creating really funny cartoon characters. Look at this lot. Nature really has gone mad. She's got big hands and legs. He's got a big forehead and big nose. Look at that. <laughs> and he's got a big chin and nostrils. And again, I've fitted the rest of his face around it. Hey, and don't forget, what if Mum really did have a massive bum? <laughs> oh, I'm going to get into trouble for this. <laughs> Try it yourself. Make nature go mad. <laughs> oh, I like that one. <laughs> Just exaggerate some bodily features and make it look as if nature has gone mad. <laughs> I tried that earlier. Do you want to see it? <laughs> you see, I get it right sometimes. Mm. <laughs> oh, thank you. Most kind. Oh, look at this. Oh, lovely. Genius, genius, ge oh, pure genius. Do you know what? Every piece of work in my Art Attack scrapbook is genius. And I didn't do any of it. Look at this lot. If you look closely at this lot, you'll see that Claire has used interwoven lettering to create her big illuminated letter. Fabulous. And Joshua and Murray's collage of an elephant is just stunning. And, you know, it just goes to show you can create brilliant art attacks with something you'd normally throw in a bin. And look at this. Lucy's cheeky snail looks very pleased with itself. I like the detail drawn on the shell. Brilliant. And Sam's quaint cottage has been completed in pastels. And if you look closely again, you can see that the texture of the paper shows through. Good technique. And Charlotte's vibrant cat picture is made entirely out of crepe paper. How did you do it, Charlotte? I sketched out my design onto different colours of crepe paper. I then carefully cut out all the pieces and stuck them down onto cards. Yeah, great art attack. And you know what? 
I think crepe paper is a really versatile art material. You know, it can be used for lots of different fantastic things. And there's one of my favourites, rosettes. Look at that. Now, to make a rosette, you need to cut out two circles of card. You can use cereal box card or, better still, cardboard box card and paint it whatever colour you like. I've got pink card. Now, for the rosette frill itself, this is where the crepe paper comes in. Just cut a long strip that's about eight centimetres wide and then paste some PVA glue around the edge on the back of one of your circles. The idea is just to paste it all the way around, going about halfway into the middle, and then just place your crepe paper over the edge like that, and then just simply bunch it or ruche it in the glue and don't worry if you run out of crepe paper because you can easily add another strip as you go. And when you've gone all the way round with your frill and your glue and the glue has dried, you have something that looks like that. Next, you need to make the two dangly bits for your rosette. Now, to do this, you need two strips of ribbon like that and snip a triangle into the end of both pieces. And if you haven't got any real ribbon, you could use coloured paper or even wrapping paper. Now, turn your rosette over and tape the ribbons on the back at a jaunty angle. So I'll just put some tape there. And to neaten the back of your rosette and to help keep the ribbons and the crepe paper nice and secure, glue the second circle onto the back. So slop some glue on. There it is, and on it goes on the back. And then just leave it to one side to dry. Now, you normally award people rosettes as competition prizes at races or shows, but how's about presenting one to your best friend for being, well, just your best friend? So when it's dry, here goes. Watch this. Just write on it, my best friend. So my, there we go. Fit it all in. Do it as neat as you can. In fact, you can always do it in pencil first and then go over it in pen. Friend. My best friend is, now watch this, dot, 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 dot. And then you simply write your best friend's name on the dotted line and then just present it to them. But if you want, you can decorate it even more by putting on some glue and sprinkling some glitter around the outside edge. And as you can see, I've also gone around the lettering with some silver and added some sparkly sequins to make it look even more special. And there it is, a crepe paper rosette for that special friend. And who knows, if you're lucky, you might even get one back. <laughs> and there's lots of different rosettes you could try. How's about doing one for your mum or dad? Or doing one for someone who does something that's really good? Top footballer. Or how about this one? And you could keep this one for yourself. <laughs> Try it yourself. Best friend rosettes. Oh, and don't forget, you can check out the website for fact sheets on this and all the other art attacks in the show. And I'll see you next time. Ta-ra!